Good morning. So you know what they say about things coming in threes? Well, first we had Even Longer providing raw long exposures for the first time. Then we had Neora Shot a few months later. And now Lightroom are getting in on the act. Yes, Adobe with their app Lightroom Camera for iOS. I have an iPhone. I don't know if this is working for other devices that aren't iPhones, but if you go into the settings, you can now see they have an option to turn on raw long exposures. But not only that, you can also do it handheld. I think that's a first, right? Neuroshock could do handheld, but not in raw. Spectre can do handheld, but not in raw. And even longer can do raw, but not not handheld so i think this is a first so i've come to lim dam to my favorite little waterfall to test it out i don't actually even know if that's even the right order because i don't know when adobe added long exposure support to lightroom because you have to go into this bit in the settings called technology previews where i, I assume they, they put some things that are in beta. So I don't think these are actually like finished features yet. I can't find them in the version history in the app store. So these could have been there a while and uh, I've just not even known about it. Can you hear the waterfall? I love that sound of falling water. It rained really heavily yesterday and for the past few days. So I'm not surprised that it's, uh, it's especially heavy today. Uh, anyway, um, Adobe are one of those companies, I was just thinking about this as I was walking, that are, it's like they're cool to hate, you know, it, it, it's cool to hate Adobe, even though Adobe, going back to I think 1991 or 1990, starting with like John Knoll and Thomas Knoll with Photoshop, they've done so much for photographers and for photography and you now video editing and you know visual effects and just everything, you know, things like that that you don't, that you don't even think of, they, they developed the DNG file format that we use every single day and you know but now it's like you know it it's people are like turning against them I think maybe because of their business model they they want to try and I don't know why actually it's cool to hate Adobe and people want to get away from Adobe products and find independent ones and you know what are your thoughts you know let me know what you think leave your thoughts in the comments below This isn't the waterfall in question, but I started here. And if you look at the UI, you can see there's a little DNG here, letting us know that we are in RAW. And there's a hand icon here, indicating handheld, which is currently off. And I forgot my tripod, so I just rested my iPhone 12 Pro on the floor. I took advantage of its flat edges because I wanted to try non-handheld first. And this is a five second exposure. Five seconds is the maximum at the moment. And once finished, I picked the phone up, tapped the little hand icon, and I tried a five second handheld long exposure. And you can see I'm definitely jittery. With other handheld long exposure apps like Spectre, you can see there's some, some live software stabilization going on using the accelerometer and, and things like that. Here though, with the way it's jittery as you take the picture, I'm really not sure. And after the capture has finished, you get this message about processing. Processing does take a while. I found it's between like 30 seconds, but always less than a minute per photo. And once it's done, Take a look. This is the, I'll call it the tripoded one. And it looks great. It's a DNG long exposure. And this is the handheld one. Look at that, a handheld raw long exposure. The textures are a lot smoother. There's the fingerprints of processing all over it, but it is indeed a DNG long exposure and the beauty of being in a Lightroom is that I can easily just edit my photo right here moments after I've captured it. So I'm going to come into my presets and choose Verde Estampat which means faded green in Romanian and links to these presets are down in the description below. And then I tried the King even longer, again over five seconds. And if you compare the results even longer's 
definitely has more detail. Lightroom's is smoother and the motion blur effect in the water is a lot better in even longer compared to Lightroom's. Lightroom's water has, you can still see the remnants of the chaotic, the rampant water, you know, it doesn't look as pleasing. And I also tried Spectre handheld as well, which of course can only shoot in JPEG. And while Spectre's motion blur effect is better than Lightroom's, Lightroom's still textures are better. They have more detail than Spectre's. But so far, so good. This is only a technology preview, don't forget. So I then headed over to the waterfall I came for and took some more photos. This is five seconds handheld, and then I saw a couple walking over the bridge, so I quickly took a two seconds handheld photo to see how it would handle moving people. And then I found a place to rest my iPhone on the floor and took some more. And again, Lightroom delivered. The handheld results are a bit softer than the non-handheld results like before, and the motion blur effect isn't as smooth, or as pleasing as even longer's, but overall, really great stuff, especially handheld. The only time it produced a blurry result, it, it really wasn't its fault. I was in a telephoto camera and I was holding my phone out over the side, uh, over, the, over the handrail of the bridge, looking down at the waterfall, and then it did produce a blurry result, but I really can't blame it for that. The telephoto is not the lens that you go to when you want uh, stable results. And in fairness, it did then nail the next, uh, I think one or two shots that I took with the telephoto. So only one of the shots that I've taken so far have, has actually not worked out, which is truly remarkable. I don't know how they're achieving their handheld. Any of my developer friends watching, if you want to weigh in on what you think is what you think they're doing because they have a really high hit rate, like very, very high. And it also works with the ultra wide camera as well. These are ultra wide DNG files. These aren't pro raw files. And am I right in thinking that the ultra wide lens doesn't have stabilization? Have I made that up? I'm not too sure, but let me know. Anyway, it nailed everything that I took with the ultra wide. I suppose when you are the creator of the DNG file, you you should know how to get the most out of it. You should know how to to do this 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 wizardry and the stretch and bend the files in, in in different ways. And we are getting to that that sort of pro raw territory. I feel with these when I see the lack of texture. I'm sure they have a dynamic range of raw files, but the textures don't look like raw textures. Yes, I know it says DNG, but DNGs aren't created equal. You have something called linear DNGs and linear DNGs there, think of them like TIFF files. You have, you know, these, these, these big files, lots of information in them, very, very dense, but they can hold edits, they can store edits. And from what I can see, you know, these, mm, there's definitely something going on there. But having said all of that, I think Adobe have definitely delivered on, on their promise. And even though this is a preview, just look at the results that we're getting so far. It is quite phenomenal what we're able to do on these, on these devices. Like, even though I said at, at the start of the video, it's cool to to not use Adobe products. It's cool to hate Adobe and criticize Adobe and Apple. But look at what I've been able to do today. I've been filming this video entirely on my iPhone. I've taken these pictures, these raw handheld long exposures on my iPhone. I've edited them on my iPhone. I'm gonna share them to Instagram on my iPhone. You know, so why? Why is it cool to, to hate on and, and to not use Adobe products and, and Apple products as well? When did that transition happen? And that's something I want to explore on my upcoming podcast. Put your ideas down below. Again, you know, I want to consolidate them, you know, like organize them, explore them and go through them on an upcoming podcast. I'm, I'm keen to see 
what you think because it is something that I am interested in. And if you are interested in getting these videos 24 hours early, if you've enjoyed this video, then click join down below. As I said, early access, 24 hours, you get bloopers and making ofs as well. But if you don't want to, if you can't, no worries. Just watching the videos till this point right at the end is great. Sharing them, commenting, liking, it helps me out more than you realize. So thank you so much for watching. Take care, stay curious. It was a curiosity that led me into the settings and turning on this, this discovering this raw handheld thing. So stay curious and back around.